Plant seeds are truly amazing. Tiny vessels of dormancy just waiting to explode with life. Aside from the few cuttings I do, and this garlic here, every single crop I grow every year starts out as a dry seed. But as wondrous as seeds are, nothing is more disappointing than a batch of them that completely fails to sprout. There's many reasons a batch of seeds can fail. From poor soil, extreme pH levels, incorrect temperatures, the wrong moisture level, and inadequate aeration. In other words, all stuff that's mostly our fault. Which is why it's doubly as disappointing, indoors or out, when a batch of seeds of your favorite crop fails to germinate when you've seemingly done everything right. You see, there's one variable that's completely out of our control, and that's the viability of the seed itself. You can provide the absolute most perfect conditions for that seed to sprout, but if it's a dud, there's nothing you can do. The one thing you can do, however, is ensure that your time, space, soil, and labor isn't completely wasted by doing a seed viability test, like I did with these carrots here before I planted them. Seeds are relatively cheap. Those things I mentioned, time, soil, space, and labor, are not. For the value of information it provides you, a seed viability test is rather simple. It does take about a week to do, but only about two to three minutes of your time. As you expand your garden to more plants, more varieties of plants, and from more sources, a seed viability test is a handy skill to have. So, pull up a chair and let's dive in. In the beginning of my adult gardening life, my time and my energy were infinite. Those were the days. I mostly saved my own seeds for the next year's crops. And if a crop failed to grow, it just meant an empty space to regroup and plant something else. No big deal. As time went on, however, the garden went from a casual hobby to both generating income and relying on it for food. So the importance put on the success of each planting greatly increased. I still save and collect my own seeds every chance I get, but I also buy a lot of seeds now, more than I ever did. And not only that, I've had dud crops that failed to sprout that I know were not my fault. Which brings us to why a seed viability test is so useful. And for me, there's three main reasons. One, it saves us time. Time is my most luxurious resource, but it's also my scarcest. For some reason, I can always find more space especially with growing some of my crops in containers. But time, that's something that even if the day had 40 hours in it, I still wouldn't have enough. I quite literally don't have time to waste on a batch of seeds that isn't gonna sprout for me. Another reason is timing. For a lot of my crops, I'm planting them at key times of the year. Respecting my zone's frost dates and timing the planting to maximize the crop is paramount to success. If I had to start over two weeks later because a batch of seeds failed, that could be my only window for that crop. And the third reason is effort. Like I said before, nothing is more disappointing than getting everything prepped, doing everything you're supposed to do, only to have nothing sprout up. For some reason, that's just the worst. It kills your spirit before you even get started. Fortunately though, we can test for seed viability quite easily and it only takes a couple of minutes. The idea behind the test is simple. Put the seeds in an optimal environment to sprout. That's it. In this case, it's damp paper towel at temperatures between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Divide the number of seeds sprouted by the number of seeds you tried to sprout. Multiply that by 100, and that's your percent viability. Now, for accuracy, Obviously, the more seeds you use, the better. But infinite seeds isn't a luxury with all crops. I would say a minimum of 10 seeds is about right, though. Any less than that, and your data can be a bit iffy. Think about it. Say you pick two seeds and both germinated. You'd think to yourself, great, 100% viability. Well, what if it just so happened that those two seeds were the only viable ones in the batch? So, more is better, but aim for at least 10. On top of that, there's a few other things that can skew your data, but in a negative way. Like we said, 
The seeds need a moist, warm environment to sprout, but not too wet and not too hot. While this test works best above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, going above 90 degrees can be fatal. Even though seeds can experience temperatures well above that in your garden and survive quite easily, for some reason, as we approach 90 degrees Fahrenheit and above, a lot of the seeds just turn to mush. 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal, but anywhere between 70 and 90, you'll still be successful. And as for moisture, well, being too wet is the number one reason that this test fails for some growers. A lot of the early online tutorials showed the paper towel actually being soaked and submerged. That's gonna be too wet. The seeds won't get any air and they'll surely die. Use a spray bottle to wet the seeds down and lightly mist the surrounding paper towel. Once it's placed in your plastic bag, it'll be at 100% relative humidity. Plus, you can easily re-moisten them if need be. In fact, drying out is fatal, so check the seeds daily. The whole experiment lasts around five to seven days, so it goes quite quickly. Past the two week mark, you can consider the seed test done, one way or another. So if you get a test batch of seeds where nothing sprouted after 14 days or so, chances are that packs a dud and you're gonna have to find another source. Doing this test about two to three weeks before your planting date is ideal, as it allows you to obtain new seeds in enough time so that you don't miss a beat. One other quick note, some seeds to germinate properly actually need access to light. Plants such as celery, lettuce, and a lot of the wildflowers. To test those types of seeds, keep them on the surface of the paper towel, just like this, and give them access to at least six hours of light a day. Artificial indoor light works just fine. While being on the surface like this causes them to dry out faster, these light seeking seeds also have a tendency to germinate quicker, so it's usually no big deal. Okay. Like we said before, take the number of seeds that successfully sprouted, divide by the total number of seeds that you used, and multiply by 100. That's your percent viability of that batch of seeds. That's great, but what's an acceptable percentage of viability? Some say 50% is acceptable. I feel that's a bit low though. Personally, I'd say anything above 70% or 7 out of 10 seeds germinating is ideal. That's what I aim for. Having said that, if I'm seeding individual plug trays for like tomatoes, peppers, or cucumbers, a lower rate can work. It's just a plug tray, and I can always overseed. If it's a row of carrots or beets outside though, and there's a huge patch left bare, well that's just lost time, effort, and space. So it really depends on the crop and what you're willing to tolerate. In the end, a seed viability test is a valuable tool in the hands of the modern gardener. A snapshot into the future that allows us to predict upcoming success or see possible failure. It's a great way to save us not only time, but possibly money. Hey guys, best of luck with your seeds this year. Happy growing. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.